Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. This is Too Deep, and welcome to our brand new series, The Nephilim. This is our first video in the series, which I've called Part 1, The Sons of God and the Nephilim. Now, there's a lot of information out there on who the Nephilim are, but it is all propagated on the same error. The interpretation is based on the Book of Enoch, which is an apophical book because it did not meet the basic standard of biblical truth. Therefore, it cannot be used to interpret scripture. So let's go to the Bible to see what it has to say about it. The first mention of the Nephilim is found in Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. When man began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, and the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. Now, at first glance, it would appear that Genesis is, is describing where the Nephilim came from. I will tackle that in another video. But as I said, it might seem that the Bible was saying that the Nephilim were the product of the sons of God having sex with human women. I don't believe that to be the case at all. And I will explain why. Let us read a portion of scripture again, just one more time. And let us do some critical thinking. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. Let's read it one more time. When man began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters was born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterwards, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Now, I want you to notice that the portion of scripture starts with man multiplying on the face of the land and daughters being born to them. And then the sons of God were attracted to them. Then they took any they choose as wives. Then it was like, oh yeah, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days as well. So let us start breaking this thing down. The scripture says, when man... The word means mankind, both men and women, began to multiply. And that word multiply means be many, suggesting a great increase in number or in quantity. On the face of the land, meaning face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, meaning that human parents were having human female offspring. Now, let's look at the second verse. It starts out, the sons of God. Let's stop right there and talk about that for a second. Peter and Jude calls them angels. So we're going to assume that they were angels. For more on what angels are, see our video, What Are Angels, under our Too Deep section. The book of Enoch called them watchers, but I do not believe that they were watchers. I will try to do a video explaining what watchers are sometime before the summer, so keep an eye out for that. These sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive and they took as their wives any they chose. That is straightforward. They married these women, whether willingly or by force. The point is they married them. Verse 3. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be a hundred and twenty years. We will assume that this verse means exactly what it says without further explanation, since it's outside the scope of this study. On to the next verse. Verse 4. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. They were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. 
then right in the middle of those sons of God marrying human women and having sex and thereby having children, Moses throws this in. Oh yeah, by the way, the Nephilim was on the earth in those days. Which days? The days when the sons of God married human women and had children by them. These children were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown, not the Nephilim, but the children of the sons of God. Why were these men um, known as men of renown? Because they hunted and killed the Nephilim. Because people feared the Nephilim. They even built higher and thicker walls than were needed to, to keep out just mere invading armies. Cities like Jericho had huge walls. Walls that reach all the way up to, to, to the clouds. But we'll get into that in another video. So these offspring of the sons of God and human women became heroes because they protected the, the terrified people from these Nephilim. They were demigods to the people. So I repeat, the offspring of these sons of God who procreated with earthly women were not the Nephilim. In fact, Moses says that they were on the earth after that as well. So how much after? During the conquest uh, of Canaan, found in Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come from the Nephilim. And we seemed to ourselves like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. The spies that Moses sent to spy out the land were deadly afraid of the Nephilim. They did not see them as heroes. They saw them as enemies. They were so scared that they didn't even think that God could protect them from the Nephilim. Why? Because of their huge size and their fierceness. Og, king of Bashan, was probably about a 16 to 18 footer, and they marched right into his land, pound him and his people up, took their land, kept his bed as a souvenir, and they weren't playing. They were like, been there, done that, and I got the bed to prove it. But when it came to the Nephilim, they were so much huger than Og, king of Bashan, they were terrified of these individuals, these, these Nephilims. But we will have to we we'll have more on that in another video. The thing is, when they saw the Nephilim, it terrified them to the point that they refused to go into the land, not even if God said he was going with them or not. They weren't going in there with the Nephilim, and that was settled. So that begs the question then, did the sons of God have a second incursion? The answer is no, they did not. There was only one incursion, and that was before the flood. I realize that there are those who claim that the Nephilim's DNA was in one of the women that, that the sons of Noah married, and that's how they got on the earth in those days. But that is so preposterous that we won't even tackle that. Think about this. These same people who believe that the Nephilim is the product of angels and women believe that the flood was because the DNA of man was tinted with non-human blood. Listen, do you think that God would wipe out the whole human race because the bloodline was tinted with Nephilim blood and then, oops, one slips through on the ark? No, I do not think so. So that begs the question, where did the Nephilim come from? Well, we will answer that in our next video. So look out for that. All right, I just want to sum it all up now. The Nephilim are not the offspring of the sons of God. Neither were they the heroes of old. The true heroes were the sons born to the sons of God because they hunted and killed the Nephilim. That is why they became the heroes of old, the mighty men. So, I'm Kenny Yates. If you liked this video, would you please press the like button and share it and subscribe to this channel for more exciting and informative videos like this one. See you next time. Be blessed and stay blessed.